What's up guys? Thanks for coming to Game in Canada with me. This week in Homebrew is going to consist of all the Nintendo Switch hacking that has happened since the end of December. We're talking emulators, homebrew launchers, exploitation of the high security measures within the Switch, and even a possible mod chip. Hashtag Team Executor lives, hashtag January was crazy for Switch Homebrew. From this point forward, I will be doing different editions of This Week in Homebrew specifically for each console. They will be titled as TWIH followed by the console name and a number. For example, you are currently watching TWIH Switch number one, the 3DS will be titled TWIH 3DS, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's get into this. First off, we're over here on Nintendo Daily News' Twitter page, and this is a video of a potentially leaked Switch 5.0 firmware update. Now, this update seems to include folders, YouTube, Twitch, internet browser, party chat, virtual console, and even themes. Now as you can see, the person is going ahead and creating a chat room for a specific game and then he's going to go ahead and invite some friends. Now this is insanely convincing and really well done, but I hate to tell you guys that this turned out to be fake. Now I had my suspicions right from the start. Right when I saw internet browser, I thought, oh no, this is not real. So we can see here, maybe in the future Nintendo will adopt something as epic as this but I believe the creator made this potentially in HTML5 or something like that, although it is just so convincing. Just look at this. It is absolutely crazy. If we go ahead and skip to the end of the video, you can see them apply a Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild theme, and it looks absolutely awesome. Nintendo really needs to take note, have a quick look at this video, and see what they need to do with their next firmware updates. Now there was some absolutely hilarious responses to this leak and a lot of people actually picked it apart and showed us why it wasn't real at all from the old YouTube logo to a few other things. Even though it was fake, it's still pretty darn cool. Let's get on to the next story. Now a few Switch updates ago on 4.0.0 Pluto noted that they added JIT memory objects to the kernel. Support separate process for secure JIT. Now, I don't have a clue what that means, but he speculates it's probably required for upcoming virtual console emulators. So this could mean in the near future, we're going to be seeing some virtual console releases on the Nintendo Switch. How awesome will that be? Now, while we're on the topic of Switch Update 4.0.0, they actually stubbed the FLOG or the Golf NES emulator that was built into the Nintendo Switch. Now, I wrote a little article speculating why they did this over on my website. I'll put a link to it down in the description in case you want to read it. Now, as you can see here, this NES emulator that was built right into the Switch actually has Joy-Con controls for one and two players for the game Golf. Now this was some sort of Easter egg that Nintendo put into the Switch and no one has really said why. Reggie, the head of Nintendo America, said that hackers found it while poking around in the code but didn't give a specific reason as to why it was there. Now the emulator can only work on an unused fresh console that has the date and time set to July 11th, which was the date of Iwata's death. All the hackers can speculate is that this is some sort of tribute to him by Nintendo, but now it seems to be removed from the Switch, and who knows if it's going to be coming back. Here's just a quick tweet of Pluto commenting on it. Why do you guys think that Nintendo removed the golf Easter egg? Go down to the comments and let me know. Hey, while you're down there, why don't you click the thumbs up button so that I can be motivated to make some more videos for y'all. While on the topic still of firmwares, version 4.1.0 came out on December 4th. This didn't seem to do a ton to the Switch in terms of hacking. It was more of a 3DS type update for general system stability. Now the reason I'm talking about firmware so much is this post by Sires M. As you can see here, version 1.0.0 is the best firmware. If you're on 1.0.0, stay on it. It will get the public stuff first via Je Me Vu on a time scale of weeks. Now we're going to be talking more about Je Me Vu in a short bit, so just keep that in the back of your mind. 2.0 to 3.0 are the next best and are interchangeable. Again, we'll be talking about how they're interchangeable in a short bit. 3.0.1 to 3.0.2 are also interchangeable and also good and potentially have the ability to get homebrew. So if you are on them and you thought 3.0 was the only way you could go, 
don't update any higher, stay on 3.0.1 or 3.0.2. 4.0.0 to 4.1.0 are also safe in the long term to crack trust zone. Now we're going to be talking about trust zone again in a short little bit here. So deja vu is going to allow us to crack that trust zone. However, the exploit relies on another issue fixed in 4.0.0. So the firmware release of 4.0.0 changed the memory controller access, which is probably fixable in the long term, but currently isn't. So if you're currently on 4.0.0 to 4.1, do not update because they might fix deja vu in a following update. Now, if you guys remember way back to the intro, I said something about a mod chip. Now, we're over here on TeamExecutor.com, and as you can see, Team Executor coming to your Nintendo Switch console. In light of a recent presentation at the Chaos Communication Congress in Germany, we've decided to come out of the woodwork and tease you a bit with our latest upcoming product. This solution will work on any Nintendo Switch console, regardless of the currently installed firmware, and will be completely future-proof. This is the solution for opening up custom firmware on the Nintendo Switch, and we want to move the community forward and provide a persistent consistent, stable, and fast method of running your own code and custom firmware patches on Nintendo's latest flagship product, and we think we've succeeded. So no matter what version of firmware you're currently on, if you can get your hands on a Nintendo Switch and just kind of leave it alone, it looks like Team Executor is going to be able to get you custom firmware if such a thing ever becomes possible. Now in this video, here is a Nintendo Switch booting up, and instead of the Switch logo, it says Executor. So we're kind of curious what is going on here. Below, they mention using a key to decrypt stage 2 of the bootloader on 1.0.0 to 2.3.0. So this hopefully means some sort of mod chip for the Switch that maybe interrupts the bootloader and allows us to run some sort of code. There has been speculation online that there will be a solderless as well as a soldering option to install this whatever mod chip type device it is going to be. In case you're looking to buy a Switch specifically for homebrew and you're trying to get a specific firmware, I'm going to link you to this thread over on GBA Temp that can show you which firmware is going to be on your Switch depending on what serial number there is. Now when you go to buy a Switch, there is a slot cut out on the bottom and there's going to be a sticker with the serial number on it. So that is how you can tell in the store. Here's just a few examples of the different serial numbers. Basically, when they stop using a certain serial number, the next set ships out, and as you can see, the red ones here are supposedly ones that aren't going to be compatible with Pega Switch, but hopefully other methods will allow us to still get homebrew and custom firmware on them. Over here on Fail Overflow's Twitter, they posted this video of a scroller for the Switch. Now, if we play this, it shows the intro to the Switch. It says, Fail Overflow presents SHOFL2, a cold boot exploit for the MV Tegra. Now, that is basically the chip that is used inside of the Nintendo Switch, and they seem to have an exploit for it that is going to allow us to probably do some pretty epic stuff. Here's another post by them. In case it wasn't obvious, our Switch cold boot exploit is a boot ROM bug. It can't be patched in the currently released Switches, and it doesn't require a mod chip to pull off. So this is absolutely epic. There seems to be a ton of different ways that we can attack the Switch on many different firmwares, and it looks like custom firmware and homebrew are going to be a very real thing in the future, no matter what firmware you're even on. So in case you guys don't really know, the Nintendo Switch is the most secure console that Nintendo has ever made, and hacking it was no easy feat. You can go ahead and watch this 3-4 CE conference on console security regarding the Switch that was starring Pluto, Derek, and Narwart. Now they went and talked about how the Switch was built from the ground up and how they needed to dissect it in order to get inside gain as much access as they could, and dump the boot ROM, and gain code execution. I'll put a link to this video in the description. I actually watched this live, and it was really, really insightful, although a lot of the stuff was right over my head. They did explain it in a lot of layman's terms that pretty much anybody can understand. So very quickly, you can see this is a little still from here, and as you can see, this is the security model of the Switch, the highest part of it being Trust Zone. Now, Trust Zone is basically the security on the Tegra chip and being able to gain this trust zone would be similar to getting full kernel access on say the Nintendo 3DS which would allow us to pretty much do anything. So on different firmwares different pieces of the security model are hackable and on earlier firmwares most of them are. 
Basically, if we can get into Trust Zone, then that firmware is likely to fall. So right after that conference, LibRetro went ahead and posted this post on Twitter of RetroArc switch port running SNES 9X 2010. Below Pluto and Derek is Chrono Trigger running on a Nintendo Switch. Absolutely crazy. So if that port of SNES 9X for RetroArc wasn't hint enough, RetroArc has now been ported over to the Switch. While we're on the topic of emulators, Atari Lynx running on RetroArc on a Switch. Pretty darn nutty. Up next is RetroArc NES running on a Switch. So this is F-C-E-U-M. And this is Super Mario Bros. 3 running on a Switch. Pretty darn nutty. If that wasn't enough RetroArc for you, here is Visual Boy Advance playing Pokemon Emerald on a Switch. Here is even Cheats working on FCEUM. So this is the NES emulator. Seriously, are you sick of emulators on the Switch yet? This is Yabuza, which is a Sega Saturn emulator running on RetroArc. It's not running amazing, but it's definitely running on there. Now, if you guys remember, a few this week in Homebrews ago, KGSWS from the ReSwitch team went ahead and got Doom running on the Switch. Now, the Doom is running and the Joy-Cons are connected. It is actually being released as KG Doom Beta, so you can go ahead and check this out if you happen to have Pegaswitch running on your Nintendo Switch. Still over here on KGSWS's YouTube page, and they have created an NRO Loader GUI. And this is apparently for Ace Loader. Now this is very early alpha. It's not quite a homebrew launcher, but this allows you to load NROs from an HTTP server. So as you can see here, you're going to go ahead and load an app in a second here. The actually Doom that I just showed off a minute ago. So if he clicks on Free Doom 2, goes back, it's going to go ahead and start up the app. So I believe it's loading that over the internet, as there is currently no SD access. Now while on the topic of homebrew launchers, Pluto is actually going to be releasing an official homebrew launcher for the Nintendo Switch, but something happened to come up and says it's going to be delayed for two weeks. Now this was on the 29th of January, so hopefully in a little bit, maybe a week and a half, we'll be seeing the homebrew launcher for the Nintendo Switch. Now up next is something you might not have even heard about. Now this is Yuzu, an experimental emulator for the Nintendo Switch. Now it says for the Nintendo Switch, but it's actually for the PC. So this is a Nintendo Switch emulator for your PC that is being developed by the Citra 3DS team. So the people that make the 3DS emulator known as Citra are now working on a Nintendo Switch emulator. I'm gonna be showing you some gameplay courtesy of the complaining gamer in a second here, but I want you guys to know that this is not running any commercial games and will not be running commercial games for a very long time. If you're expecting the same kind of progress that you saw with Seamu and playing Zelda Breath of the Wild, this is probably not going to become a Super Mario Odyssey emulator anytime soon. I'll put a link to this video called the Nintendo Switch Emulator First Look by BSOD, and it's basically just showing off kind of the layout of the emulator itself. Pretty simple looking at the moment, but go ahead and check out his video. Give him a sub and a like while you're over there. Now, I said I would mention some gameplay on that emulator, and we are now looking at a Wii U homebrew game called Space Game. Now, it actually just got ported over to the Nintendo Switch using LibTransistor. And as I said before, courtesy of the complaining gamer, we actually have some gameplay. So this is the Nintendo Switch emulator gameplay playing the Space Game by VG Moose. So here is Space Game currently playing at, I think, 1 FPS. I believe these are GBA Temp logos flying in. Pretty silly looking game, but it looks like this might be one of the first games that ever gets playing well on Yuzu. So fingers crossed for the future of this emulator and maybe some more homebrew will come out that we can actually test. Make sure you guys subscribe to The Complaining Gamer and give him a thumbs up. Link will be in the description. Now, if you guys remember a little bit ago, I showed a Nintendo Switch with a blue screen of death on it, or so we thought, and the only title with it was Oops. It actually turned out that that was something we wanted to happen, as I speculated, and it was Trust Zone code execution. So Trust Zone, as I said, the highest security measure in the Switch, has been pwned by Michael Cyrus. Now, if we go over again, you can see here's Jamais Vu, which is the 1.0.0 Trust Code code execution exploit for the Nintendo 
Nintendo Switch. And this is going to allow you to pretty much do anything you want on the 1.0.0 Switch. So not a lot of people have access to these. Again, while talking about Trust Zone code execution, Michael Cyrus has another method for 2.0.0 as well as 3.0.0. And that is why earlier I said that they were interchangeable. And that is because you can use the same technique on both of them to gain Trust Zone code execution. Now with all this talk about code execution and whatnot, maybe you're sitting there with a Nintendo Switch on 4.1, you don't have access to a mod chip yet from Team Executor, what can you do to have fun on your Switch that isn't the normal stuff? Well here's a video from Skullator that is how to watch YouTube videos on your Nintendo Switch. So I'm going to put a link to this down in the description in case maybe you want to watch YouTube videos on your Switch and just do something kind of hacky on it at the moment. Make sure you guys subscribe to Skull later as well as give them a like. A little bit more recent news, a pirate group known as BBB or Big Blue Box has released the Switch Master Key. So for certain versions of the Switch, mainly firmwares 1.0.0 to 2.3.0, they have released what is called the Master Key. Now the Master Key basically allows you to decode anything from the Switch on a PC. Now there is currently other master keys needed, so the 3.0.0, the 3.0.1 to 0.2, as well as the 4.0 to 4.1. The master key is super illegal, so they're not showing it here over on GBA temp, but it is definitely out there in the interwebs. In the near future, these master keys might become instrumental in allowing us to play cartridge dumps on our Nintendo Switch. And last and possibly least is an iDan5X Switcheroo WebKit exploit. Now this only works on 1.0.0 to 2.0.0, so currently it serves really no purpose as Pegaswitch works on both of those and higher, so we don't really need to expect anything from them according to ChuckNorify17, but keep your eye on this, you never know. Switcheroo might become something very prominent in the near future. Well guys, I know that was a whole ton of information and I'm sure a lot of it went over your head just as sure as it went over my head. I'm not fully able to explain a ton of this stuff yet, the trust zone and the kernels and the boot ROMs and all this. Slightly new to me when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. I'm hoping I can learn a little bit more about it, hopefully get my hands on a Switch in the near future. If you guys wanted to help me get a Switch, I'm going to put a link down in the description where you can donate. We're currently at $114 towards getting Getting a switch at this point in time if I'm unable to get a switch on 3.0.0 or lower then hopefully the mod chip from team executor will come out and I will be able to gain code execution on a later model anyway we're gonna try to get us a switch I'm gonna try my very best to get us an older firmware but that means it's gonna be more expensive so please donate below also I want you guys to let me know what you thought of this switch specific episode of this week in homebrew I'm thinking about doing switches on Sundays have like a switch Sunday maybe a Wii U Wednesday and a 3ds Thursday I was thinking potentially even wrapping up some Sony stuff into a Saturday episode let me know what you guys think down below don't forget, hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up. I'm going to be coming back at you guys very soon with some more videos. You won't be seeing a long break from me again like you did before. Much love. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.